There's no shortage of videos on YouTube about Warren Buffett. However, I do believe that the overwhelming majority of videos that cover Warren Buffett are not specific enough about how he went about getting rich. Think about it. If you're crystal clear about how Warren Buffett got rich, then you can simply copy his methods and the same will happen to you. And when I talk to friends and family that are in my life, along with reading comments on social media about how people talk about investing and trying to gain wealth, I am of the opinion that most people, and maybe even you watching this video, do not really have a solid understanding of how to get wealthy. I'm going to guess that it is most likely the case that you are jumping around, erratically consuming information from a bunch of different people with no clear plan in place that you follow every day of every year of your life. And just like building muscle in the gym, when it comes to building wealth, you have to consistently show up every day to get any long-term results. And the bottom line is this. You only have one life, and your life is actually moving very fast. And if you don't start doing the right things right now, then you better forget about trying to become wealthy. So let's get real clear right now about Warren Buffett and how he went about acquiring wealth. Warren Buffett is known for giving lots of really great advice. But I believe, practically speaking, his advice on the importance of value investing is most important to actual real-world investors, people like you and me. Perhaps one of his most famous and important quotes is, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Basically, value investing in this framework is buying stocks that are undervalued by the market. The key behind this is that the market price of the stock, in other words, what it's trading for, is not really reflective of its true value. Obviously, this means that you need to understand the difference between price and value. I think most of our viewers find this obvious. The price of something is simply its advertised price, what you can buy it for from the person selling it whereas value is what it's actually worth. You can think about this in the context of real estate. A listing agent may list a home for sale at $500,000, so that's its advertised price. But the value of the property could be different. It could be higher or it could be lower. We've mentioned before in some of our other videos that on our staff is a real estate appraiser. And he sees this all the time in his practice where a property will be marketed for sale or will be under contract for sale at one price and its actual true value is either above or below that price. And this is where the investor, in this case the value investor, can really make his or her living. You simply have to have the knowledge and be willing to do the research to find assets that are priced below their value. In the context of Warren Buffett, that means looking at the stock market, since he is primarily an investor in equities of public companies and not real estate. But I think it's important to note that you can apply this framework to other investments, not just publicly traded companies. So what Warren Buffett does, along with his partner Charlie Munger, and all the people that work for him, is scour the world of stocks for those companies that are trading at a discount to their intrinsic value. But you won't even begin to be able to do this unless you know how to calculate intrinsic value. In this case, the intrinsic value of the stock. It is a four-part process. First, one of the most popular ways to calculate intrinsic value is by using a discounted cash flow analysis, which involves estimating the future cash flows of a company and then discounting them back to their present value. Now, I think a lot of people, when they hear about a discounted cash flow model, they may think that this is something that's a little bit too confusing to them. But it actually isn't confusing at all. In fact, if you Google discounted cash flow model, you will be able to find easy templates that you can plug into Excel and run your own discounted cash flow in under one hour. So it does require a little bit of work, but only a little bit of work. 
And I really hope the people who are bothering to watch this channel aren't looking for some type of get rich quick gimmick. If you really want to be wealthy and exceptional as compared to everyone else, then you will have to do a little bit of work. So therefore, do yourself a favor and Google discounted cash flow analysis and familiarize yourself with it. It really is not that hard. Once you are familiar with the discounted cash flow analysis, it will be easy for you to plug in numbers yourself for different companies that you may be interested in, whether it's Apple or Microsoft or Tesla or whatever the company might be. Step two when trying to estimate intrinsic value is to look at a company's book value, which is the value of the company's total assets minus its liabilities. Again, this is something that is actually easy to figure out with a little bit of work since publicly traded companies are required to disclose a lot of information about the company holdings, including assets and liabilities. Therefore, it is actually easy for you with a little bit of research to determine the book value of a company. Then you can compare it to its market value and see if it's overpriced or not. Steps three and four to estimate intrinsic value are more qualitative approaches. Step three is determining how good a company's management is at executing and running a business. Again, this is qualitative. So it's not like you can just pull up a website and have someone tell you if a company has good management or not. Again, this will require a little bit of work. The best thing you can do is simply read as much about the company's management as you can, and there are plenty of publications where you can find commentary about a company's management. You can get opinions from journalists along with analysts. The most important thing you can do is get the opinion of multiple analysts when making your own decision. It is quite likely that one or two analysts could be completely wrong. But if you seek out the opinion of 10 to 15, then you will have a more comprehensive understanding of how the company management performs. Step four is analyzing the company's competitive position within a market. In other words, if Buffett is analyzing NVIDIA for a potential investment, he would do the following. First, he would look at NVIDIA's market share and the strength of its brand. And if it had a high market share of the GPU market, for example, along with a strong brand recognition, that would all be positive. He would then want to make sure that NVIDIA had some competitive advantages, such as proprietary technology that no one else has. He would want to see if they owned a lot of patents, for example. So in summary, before Warren Buffett spends one cent of his hard earned money, he would go through this four step process. Broadly speaking, this framework can be understood as value investing. It's literally all there for you. If you want to do a little bit of work, you can become wealthy.